Stone Cold. <laughs> Ese es el nombre tuyo, Stone Cold. Tell me how you came up with that name, bro. I, I would, I'm, I was just copying uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin, man. I just, I'm a fan of wrestling. I'm a fan of wrestling. I just, it, the funny thing is, yo, yo puse Stone Cold hace como dos meses. I, I have, I never did that. I never, mm -hmm. I just always had Nettie signs, and and then uh, you think one amigo que he would just change his uh, his display name all the time on Twitter, and every time I got a tweet from him, it would say something like uh, Mad Mike or no sé qué, and I was like, who the hell is this? And I would have to. And then I was like, oh, I like the way the notifications come in. And don't say I'm a fan of wrestling and I watched a Stone Cold Steve Austin documentary. And I'm like, oh, man, it'd be funny because my friend used to, my friend tells me all the time, hey, que, you know, when we're busting balls, he's like, oh, man, you're fucking Stone Cold, bro. You're just, oh, you're, oh, you're, you know, because you know, you know, you know, so then I just, I put Stone Cold to fuck around. And then when the video popped off, everybody started calling me Stone Cold. I was like, oh, no, oh, you're, that's you're, not, hey, not, you're, <laughs> you're, you're much cooler than uh, Steve Austin, bro. So that, that's we're going to rebrand you to be Stone Cold. Oh, you. I appreciate it. I didn't. I really I was like, I was just I forgot to change that. I fucked around. I was fucking around two months ago on my Instagram and I forgot to change it. I didn't. Yeah. But I've never gone by a nickname. I've never had a nickname. I'll tell you a funny story. My friends and I, after high school, we all went to Disney. Right. We all, we all went to. Uh, actually universal uh down here in florida and we all had t-shirts because you know we we're 18 and we we're stupid we all had t-shirts that had the franchise it said the franchise on the front and in the back i had everybody's nickname everybody had their own nickname in the back and then when it got to me my shirt said nary that's it that's all it said was my first name and we we're walking down universal and we hear a bunch of girls that were our age 18 years old at the time and they were like what's a nary Like we hear them say that, and to this day, like I've never had a nickname. That's the whole point of the story. I've never had a nickname, so to this day, people are like, "Oh, Nary's your nickname." Like that's it was a funny joke because they never had a nickname, and now the, the thing pops off when I'm so caught. I'm like, "Oh, okay, I'm, that wasn't on purpose." No, I like that. I like that. And don't say, Nary, talk to us who you are. Tell us your story, where you're born, um, how you start your beginning, how you got into comedy. Uh, bueno, I nací in León, Nicaragua. Uh, and I always claim either León or La Paz Centro because my mom was from La Paz Centro and that's the first three, four years of my life, that's where I lived, it was La Paz Centro. And I came over to this country. The way I came over to this country is a funny story that I have as part of my act. I haven't put it out on video yet because I'm still working on it because I just started talking about this now. I've been doing comedy now 18 years. I just celebrated oh. 18 years the other day. Wow, felicidades, felicidades. Gracias, gracias. And also, I came over to this country, me trajeron mojado, y como me trajeron una señora, reconocieron de Metis Lady, who had a son that was born in this country, and her son was the exact same age that I was, but she was born in Nicaragua. So they had her, they had me go with her to this country, and they taught me, me entrenaron, if you say, if anybody asks you your name, your name is Victor Rosales, because that was the kid's name, Victor Rosales, Victor Rosales. So they train me to say that just in case, por si acaso alguien me pregunta, hey, who, you know, who, uh, so then I, I, I would like, all right, I was ready. The tres años, cuatro años, I was ready. Uh, I'm Victor Rosales, I'm Victor Rosales. And nobody asked me the name. So that I came to this country, uh, Mojado. Entonces, ya los diez años, I got my residency. And, but I grew up, I, uh, I'm the youngest of four. Uh, my, we grew up in Miami my entire life. Uh, the, the tres, cuatro años that I got here. And, grew up in Miami. My parents are still married. They're still together. They still live together. Um, and then I started watching stand-up before I was supposed to. At eight, nine, ten years old, I was watching Eddie Murphy Delirious. And I would just watch it and rewind it, watch it and rewind it. To the kids out there, rewind is this thing with video cassettes that you would actually have to rewind. It wouldn't be the back button. You would actually have to rewind that shit because that's how old I am. And then we had, was just watching. we had a cue. We had a cue. It, you know. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. We had to rewind, stop, rewind. There's a whole thing. So we, uh, so I would watch stand up all, all the time. Uh, Eddie Murphy, and then when I got a little older, like 13, 14 years old, it was Martin Lawrence, and it was just all of these acts, all of these comedians. And this is before Comedy Central. Comedy Central didn't exist. I remember watching VH1 stand up comedy spotlight, where like they had like 15 minutes little intervals when they just had people come on and do uh, stand-up comedy. And I always loved it. 
Um, I never thought I could do it. What did you love about it? What did you love about comedy? Uh, I love making people. I love the laughter. And me and my brother, we would share that love. Like we would watch stand up and we would both laugh and like, oh man, that's funny, whatever. And we that 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 we would just both of us. He's three years older than me, but when you're ten and your brother's thirteen, that's like a world of difference. Yeah. But the fact that we could both sit down and watch the same thing and enjoy it the same way, it, it appealed to me. I, I thought it was great. I thought I, I I never thought I could do it. I I never thought. I thought it's a cosa de artista, cosa de uh, actors and stand up, and I thought you had to be born into that. And I go, laughter, that's respect, laughter, that's is, laughter, is, laughter is more powerful than you, than people think, correct? Oh, uh, absolutely, absolutely. That's like it, it, it really is. Um, for a lot of years, my goal was to do. If you if you guys go back and watch the Eddie Murphy joke about the ice cream man, about the ice cream truck, that ice cream man joke that Eddie Murphy did. This was, he was 22 at the time that he did Delirious. He's a 22-year-old black man in America. And I am a Latino immigrant. And I'm maybe 10 years old at this time I'm watching this. And I relate to everything he's saying. Yeah. So uh, it didn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter that our background. He, he that? was. You didn't yeah. get it, man. You didn't get it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Kiss it and make it like all that. That, that ice cream. But I'm, you're sorry, the Nicaragua. I was 10 years old, living in Miami. This is this is a uh, a 22 year old black man from America that is now super rich and famous. Eddie Murphy at 22 was already past SNL. He was already doing that. Pero la cosa que la comedia, the jokes brought us together. Like I could, yeah. oh, I could relate to that. Oh my God, this is so funny. I know exactly what he's talking about. So talk, so talk to us about this. Uh, how old were you when you did your first stand up? I was, it was a week after my 22nd birthday. It okay, was how did you September. feel? How did you feel? The, the moment I got off stage, right? And then this is a true story. So the moment I got off stage, I did five minutes. It's open mic, it's amateur night. So five minutes at the Miami Improv, September 18, 2003. And September 17, I'm sorry. And I get off stage and I put my hands on my knees and I'm like, <sighs> just breathing, right? The rush. And I, I've never done a drug. I'm not judging people who do drugs. I don't give a shit if you do drugs. I've never done a drug and I don't even drink alcohol. <laughs> but I imagine. Need, hold on, hold on. You don't even drink flor de caña? I don't, ni flor de caña. I don't even drink alcohol. Just pitay and cacao, right? That's it. <laughs> cacao, bro. Puro cacao like that. Or, or chicha or yeah. whatever. Cebada. Oh, cool. my God. Me das una cebada ahorita, me muero. Mm -hmm. Entonces, but I would just. I could, That's what I imagine drugs feeling like. Because that high that I had after five minutes, it was only five minutes. And I know some of you are like, oh, five minutes ain't shit. It, it's a lot, ladies. Five minutes no. is enough. It's enough, ladies. Uh, <laughs> it. It's enough, ladies? It's no, enough, ladies. Five minutes is enough, ladies, bro. <laughs> Let's talk about the preparation. The preparation for you to get up there. Because that's how you overcome that rush, yeah. right? Um, and preparation also for the ladies, but we'll talk about that later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so tell me about the preparation because you have to be organized. Listen, Eddie is talented, but he was also a, a, a hard worker, a, right. investing in his craft, just like Michael Jordan, right. just like any one of the great, even anybody, Kevin Hart. Anybody okay. who's great at what they do, they they are uh, preparing and investing. Now, I will tell you this: my preparation for the first time I went on stage is completely different. This is we're talking about 18 years separation. So when I first got on stage, my preparation was I wrote out every joke. I wrote out, and my form of jokes are storytelling. I just tell you stories that's happened in my life. And, yeah. and, and I try to, I maybe exaggerate a little bit of here and there, but for the most part, I just tell you stories that happened in my life. And I was just talking stories. I just told five minutes worth of stories that I, that I was living through. At that time, I had just gone through a breakup. I had just broken up with a girl who left me for a woman. So that was one of my jokes where I talked about, and I, had a, I used to work at a big company. And I had like 80 people there to watch me, 80 of my coworkers and family. So I had this thing where everybody knew my story already. So for me to introduce them to them, it would be kind of silly. So I told them, I go, yeah, I just, I, I just went through a breakup right now. They already knew. They already knew the story because it was a five year. I was 23 years old and I had dated this chick for five years. And that's a big chunk of your life. When you're, when yeah. you're 23 and you date for five years, that's a big chunk. And I remember saying, I was like, we had a lot. It's too bad because we had a lot in common. We both like sports. Uh, we both uh, we both like traveling and we both like pussy. Like that was my first joke. 
because everybody knew she left me for a woman. And so immediately <laughs> hit the ground, so, hit the ground, hey, boom. So real quick, would you say, would you say that storytelling in today's society with so many people overcoming mental challenges, storytelling, comedy, stand-up could be a form of therapy or healing? Oh, without a doubt. There is an old, old, old trope in comedy. Like people from the 80s would say this. Like stand-ups from the 80s and 90s would say this. They go, I don't. I do stand up because I can't afford com. I do I do I do stand up because I can't afford uh, uh, therapy. That's what they would say in the eighties and nineties. Yeah, that was before mental health. That was in the era where mental health was a taboo thing, and you can't talk about it. Oh no, no, so puede decir eso. But that's that's the truth. Uh, it was very therapeutic. I will say this: it was very therapeutic for me to get on stage, and what some people would be like, "Oh, you're airing your dirty laundry." I would say I'm being honest with myself. Like this is this is my. I'm not making shit up. It's not como si le estoy diciendo que, oh, she left me for a woman when she really didn't. I'm not making shit up to be funny. I, to me, what I'm doing is I'm talking about my life and here's my life. And people find it funny. People find it relatable. And that's, that's what I wanted. That's all I cared about. There you go. Relatable, funny, and yeah. it helps you overcome that. Right. Ese dolor profundo. Sí. You know? So that's pretty good. Let, let's yeah. talk about this because because now I love how your storytelling it kind of segues into you know, what are the challenges in building a brand in comedy now with cancel culture? I don't know if you want to touch on that. You know? No, I, I'm fine with that. Here's the thing. I, I've been lucky on a couple of different fronts in my comedy in, in, in the cancel culture aspect. One, uh, I don't, I, when I only talk about myself, I only talk about stories that's happening to myself. You, who's going to get offended at that? It, for all you, you could get offended if you could be one of these like, oh, you can't make fun of this people or that people or that people. I'm, I'm just talking about myself. And when I'm, when I was a kid and I was starting doing stand up, I was single and I talked about being single. When I taught, when I started dating, I talked about dating and my, my experiences dating and I would, how I would meet girls on MySpace and yada yada yada. And then when I got married, I was talking about my wife, how about getting married? Now I'm married with children and I'm talking about being married with children. So really, the only people who could possibly get offended at my act right now are my wife and kids. You're right. They're the only so, ones. So, cause, because you talk about your story versus right. your opinion. So I give my opinion about what's happening in my life. There you go. So that's my opinion about my life, Absolutely. which is not to say everybody's different. And I'm not saying, all I'm saying, it's difficult to offend. The relatable part comes because I am fully aware that I am not special. That just because I had a woman, just because I dated somebody who left me for another woman, I'm not the only guy that went through that. I, I'm realistic. So when I tell that story, I had other people like, oh, my God, Fulano de Tal went through that same thing. Oh, my God, you think we're going to that he went through the same thing. Oh, I went through the same thing. So yeah. when, I tell you, when I tell you a story about getting into an argument with my wife because hey, uh, she went to Ikea and when she came back, I didn't have the reaction that she wanted from me. And I, and I asked her, did you have this reaction? Did you have this conversation with me in your head? And now you're mad because the me in your head had a different reaction than the me in real life. I get people coming up to me. That whole story goes longer, obviously. And there's, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm not, I'm just giving you the premise. I'm not giving you the funny stuff. But I just, hearing other people go, oh my God, my wife and I get in the same fights. We get in the same arguments. But I'm yeah. just talking about myself. So if you're going to get offended, you're going to, nobody, who's going to get offended at me talking about myself, giving my opinion about myself? One. And no, two, I, think, I, I think it's smart. Yeah. And two, I, that's not even my design. That's just the way I am. Like I always told myself when I started comedy, what kind of comedian do you want to be? And I would always say, however funny your friends think, be whatever kind of funny you are around your friends, be that on stage. That's the goal. It's not easy. It takes time and practice. But However you're funny and you, whatever kind of funny you are with your friends as a stand-up, that's what I wanted to be, like that guy. If I was the kind of guy that would be, you know, observational like Jerry Seinfeld, then I would have done that. But I'm not, that's not who I am in real life. So why would I put that on stage? That's an act at that point. And yeah. don't say, the other reason I never got into the whole, I never, I, I dodged the cancer culture or have dodged the cancer culture to this point is because I don't fucking have anything. <laughs> to cancel you can't cancel me from instagram bro you can't cancel me from unemployment checks you can't fucking cancel me like i uh, you know what i mean during like from that pandemic i was on unemployment there was there wasn't even comedy clubs open so you can't fucking cancel me from being 
from being broke. You, what do you yeah. got? Like that's it. the only one who I'm afraid of canceling me is the fucking power company, bro. The light company. That's the only one I care about canceling me yeah. at this point. No, I love that. So, I love that. I, I love that. One day, I'm, if I get a TV show, I'll worry about getting canceled by the TV show. But I don't have nothing right now. Nah, I think it's. I ask that question for our viewers. Our viewers are business owners. They're comedians. They're they're profiles. And it's important to hear from somebody else, other mm. outlooks, so that they can make the best choices. Because I like that. I learned what you're talking about is, you know, if you talk about yourself and your mm-hmm. storytelling, then if people get offended. Fuck them. That's on them. You know, because that's yeah. Your how would point. you like? It's a, I would love to hear somebody who got offended at my comedy because all I do is talk about myself. Yeah, like, you I know, don't you understand. Mentioned, you I don't mentioned, mention groups. I don't talk about groups in general. Yeah, I don't talk about. I, Listen, you mentioned Mojado. That's the that's the immigrant process that some most and a lot and more will continue to progress in this country Correct. and become American citizens and contribute to the economy and pay taxes. So yeah, I'm a proud uh, of going through ESL. You know, que la gente dice, no, se burlen de esa gente. no, listen, I'm proud of alumni ESL. You know, when we came from Nicaragua in, in the 80s. All right, let's talk about this. But it shows, it just shows, man, being a proud alumni of ESL. Be, it just shows the work that we're willing to put in to assimilate and be part of this a part of this country like that oh, like that oh, that to to me when people were used to use that as an insult oh you're one of those ESO kids i'm like yeah that means i'm fucking trying bro yeah well no yeah. that means we speak both languages yeah. we adjust to both cultures and we That's have right. tradition so right. we're not trying to fuck with that yeah. all right so you recently went viral man good or bad you went viral okay uh talk to me about that experience um, did you intend to go viral? Maybe no. you hit the maybe you hit the right demographic, you know, because typically, you know, the, the Cubans have done a good job. Because we could want Dominicans have done a great job. Dominican the flags and the Nike, um, you know, so they've done a really Mexicans have done a really great. Shout out to those three major demographics. We've been waiting for a breakout, a movement of Nicaraguenses. You went viral. Talk to us about that experience. So, so this is this is a, I, I had this conversation with my wife. I, I'm gonna get a bit emotional but it, it's uh it's it's as sincere as it can be i've been doing comedy 18 years a month ago up until a month ago i never yo nunca i never even said latino or hispanic on stage i would talk about me and i would say i'm from miami and my thought process was over, was always for 18 years and i would say this to anybody who would listen i would think it to myself and i would say it and i would believe it and say i don't have to force feed the audience my ethnicity they can tell by looking at me, and when I mention Miami, they say it's the tipo of Miami. He's Hispanic, right? That's they don't. That's all I give a fuck about. Because all I cared about for 18 years was to be funny, number one, and number two, to be as relatable as Eddie Murphy was in that Eddie, in that Ice Cream Man truck bit. Yeah. I want I want every one of my jokes to feel relatable to everybody. I, like I want that. some. I want. I I wanted that for 18 years. I'm like, I'm just gonna go. I'm never gonna say Hispanic. I'm never gonna talk about a Latino. I'll talk about being from Miami because that's who I am. I'm I'm from Miami. Bueno, so I'm, I'm pero talk- en Nicaragua. En Nicaragua. Correcto, correcto. So I'm talking about that for 18 years, right? 17 years and 11 months. Entonces, in August, I start. I do a show with Angela Johnson at the Palm Beach Improv. And Angela has this thing where her openers have to be clean. I have no problems being clean. I have no problems doing a clean show. If there's anybody out there watching from the corporate world, I do clean show. I work for I work on cruise ships that make you do clean. I no problems. So they call me. The improv goes, hey, Angela Johnson needs a clean opener. I'm like, I'm in. I'm down. And I go to West Palm Beach and I and I say, yeah, I'm from Miami. And people start yelling out, Guano, Guano. And I go, no, I'm not. And don't say, me pongo, I open my, this is how I write now. I haven't written a joke down on a piece of paper in over 10 years. But this is how I write now. I open my mouth, and if something's funny, I keep on saying it. And that's it. And then the next week, I'll remember, oh, yeah, remember that funny story you told? Keep on doing that shit. So I was at West Palm Beach. I said Miami, and somebody yelled out, Cubano, oh, hallelujah. Un lugar aquí en Miami. Yeah, no, no, no. Popular. So to the list. Entonces, I said, no, I'm not Cuban. I said, you know, it's weird because whenever I tell people I'm from Miami, they automatically assume I'm Cuban and I'm not Cuban. And then they get mad when they're like, oh, where's your Cuban flag? I'm like, I'm not fucking Cuban. And they go, oh, bro, you're one of those? So that's how the joke started. Like, you're one of those? What do you mean? Oh, bro, I'm so arrepentido. I'm not fucking Cuban. Oh, bro, you should be proud of where you're from. I am proud of where I'm from. I'm just not Cuban. 
And then I, I would, and then people started laughing. And I would say, I do the same thing. I do shows in Texas and in, in California. And people, Mexicans are like, oh, you're representing for la raza. And I'm like, which, which, what raza? Because I'm not Mexican. <laughs> oh, bro, you're fucking one of those. So then the joke started. And then I started saying, no, I'm from Nicaragua. And then two people clapped. This is West Palm Beach. So this is not like heavily Latino. This is mostly white people. And a couple of people clapped. And then somebody yelled out Fritanga. Okay. Do the, I do continue the story. I'm, I be from Nicaragua. This is how I came to this country. Yeah, I'm Ohio, blah, blah, blah. And I tell them the story about that. The next weekend, I'm in Miami. And I, and I say, yeah, I'm from Nicaragua. <laughs> Boom. A big applause. Bah! A lot of people clapping. And I see people who are not Nica and they're not so Nicaraguans and they start saying, Ridanga, they start yelling, I guess a fleet or whatever. And I start improvising on that. I'm like, that's a weird reaction to have somebody telling you what they're from. <laughs> I'm just going to yell out food. So the so that I do that. And I tell them, this is a different reaction that I had in Palm Beach. In Palm Beach, people didn't even know where Nicaragua was. I said Nicaragua and nobody gave a fuck. But here's the important part of this story. After the shows, even in Palm Beach, this happened. After the shows. For 18 years or 17 years and 11 months, people after the shows will come up to me and I'm not, I don't mean to sound ungrateful, but people will come up to me and say, oh man, you're funny. Oh bro, you were funny. Oh, I like you. You were funny. You were funny. And I say, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Whatever. But after that, after me talking about being from Nicaragua, after me talking about a story that I came over when I came over to this country, after that, it wasn't your funny. People will come up to me and say, thank you. Mm -hmm. And that was a first. I was like, thank you for what? And they were like, for letting them know that you could be one of us and still be fucking fun. And yeah, and also it comes well during Hispanic Heritage Month because it, for, it just it timed out. It timed for, out. Yeah. For the adult livelihood that you had, hasta ahora deciste que era nicaragüense. Because you were from Miami, you were a comedian, you're your you're number one, your craft. But right. you got to take some pride. You know, I was never like, oh, whatever. I was just no, like, I know, you know, I know. like, I would always say, however funny you are with your friends, be on stage. And in my mind, I never brought up the fact that I was Nicaraguan to go with my amigo. Yo tengo, el grupo nosotros somos como siete nosotros. Son tres Nicaraguan y tres cubanos y hay un, y hay un eh, venezolano. El grupo nosotros, la, la, la pelota nosotros, que we have like 20 years of being friends. And we never bring up Cuban this, Nicaraguan this. We just are who we are. We're, we're, yeah, we yeah, never we're bring that up with each other. So no, no era que estaba arrepentido o algo. Solo que en mi mente, I was like, why even bring it up? It's not a, it's not a big deal. Sí, But I was wrong. Todos, porque todos somos humanos. Todos somos humanos. Exactamente. Yo hasta But, ahora, yo hasta ahora. Yeah, now I have to tell you. Oye, But, orgullo, nigga. Porque... But, I, but I was wrong. But mm -hmm. I was wrong. And I told my wife this. And I told my friend who's a comedian this. I said, that logic that I had, that way of thinking for 18 years, I was wrong. Yeah. I was wrong because it's important to see representation of yourself. And I, I found that out by luck because somebody yelled out that I'm Cuban and I go, no, I'm not Cuban. I know it's weird that I'm from Miami and I'm not Cuban. That's how the whole thing started. It, I wasn't planned. And then the following weekend, I did the same jokes that were more polished, the same stories, and they filmed it. And I didn't know they were filming, but they filmed it. And then they posted it. And at first I was going to tell him, hey, take that shit down because the joke is not done yet. I'm not done with that. I'm not done completing, finishing that joke. But when I got 5,000 hits in three hours, I was like, oh, you know what? Maybe you should keep it up. <laughs> you should keep that shit up. And the love and el apoyo, man, the support that I got. From... Shout, out, shout out to Asi Somos Nicaragua. Shout out oh, to Helanica. Shout out to Nica. Nica. Shout out to Pinolero. Right? Todo, todo eso. Todo eso. Those is exactly eso mismo. Hello, uh, hello, Nika. I see some Nicaragua. They started sharing my shit. And then I started getting three, four, five, eight hundred, nine hundred new followers, a thousand, fifteen hundred new followers in, in, two, in two days. And I was like, what the fuck is going on? Y lo mensaje de pollo que I would get. Thank you for repping our people correctly. There you go, Thank you for being one of us. Thank you for letting the world know that we could be funny. That you know, message. You know, you, know, you know why I liked it? I liked it. I don't knock anybody else, but you know, I liked it because you represented us in who we are. I, I, I felt that and you didn't do it, you know, being a, being un vulgar, you know, sí, 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 sí. Todos los, you know, I basically, you know, in the pantalla, puta, me ver, you know, and I'm like, oh, así no somos nosotros ahora. No todos somos sí. así, you know? Correcto. Bueno, eso es cosa, eso es cosa de mi mamá, like, sí. mis padres, mis padres no son, 
y esto no es un insulto cualquiera, but my parents are not, yo todavía, yo acabo de cumplir 40 años la semana pasada, I still don't curse in front of my parents. Yeah, me neither, bro. I, I still don't curse in front of my parents. Mi mamá maybe, tiene maybe, maybe, me... maybe no sea un caballo, no sea no, animal. Así, cosas así. Cosas así, entonces cuando yo, le, cuando yo lo voy a llamar a alguien, en, en cero seis, es que es esa mierda, le, en frente de mis padres le digo, ¿qué es esa basura? Yep. <laughs> Porque yep. yo nunca, nunca soy vulgar en frente de mis padres. I love entonces, it, bro, I love it. That, so let me that tell you, me that. Yeah, let right. me ask you this, for our viewers, you know, you, I guess the question was going to be phrased, you know, the value of going viral, you didn't really prepare for it, you were just being honest with yourself at the right I, point. I did, right not, time. I, so, I did not prepare for it. It's almost weird now because I put out a, I put out a second video, again, still with about entre esos, en, en la historia esa de, de siendo nicaragüense, and that one went viral también. I, said, I put out another video yesterday where it had nothing to do with being Nica, and it's not getting the same amount of hits, right? And I told myself, do you have to, do I? always have to be that guy that's always talking about Nicaragua. Don't. And, and in my mind, I was like, no, man, I'm just going to be funny. And if, and then this, lo mensaje que cojo, and again, it's not, it's not as many views as the other two videos, but the, the message is like, bro, gente que me manda mensaje, Nicoyo, so, bro, that's hilarious, bro. Thank you. And they put the Nika flag, you know, the little emoji. Yeah, you don't want to, you don't want to force creativity either for the sake yeah, of yeah. producing content. Correct, you know? correct. I wasn't prepared for the, for the, for, for the viral thing, but I will be lying if I told you I wasn't trying to go viral before that. Of As course. a stand-up comedian, oh. this is what you're trying to do. You're trying to build your brand. And for years, I even said, I said it, not, I swear to you, you're going to think it's el, La Noche que se filmó ese video, the first two videos. Of my, that night, we were talking to comedians in the green room about how do you go viral? And I go, bro, I wish I fucking knew. I've been trying. I put out funny fucking clips and nobody watches them. You know, the, more, the, more, the moral of the story is you got to work on your craft every day because Correct. you never know Correct. which moment for any business, any comedian, any brand to, to impact people and go viral. Okay, yeah. so that's good. Let's, yeah. let's go into this. Give me, um, we're going to wrap things up pretty quick. Not quick, but give me three Nicaraguan dishes that are underestimated. So you can't name anything that, that they call you when you say queso nicaragüense. Right. So give me three First of all, el nacatamal is okay. unbeatable. Es el mejor tamal de todos los lo, lo latinos. I don't give a fuck, but I will fight that fight as long as you want me to fight that fight. I don't give a fuck. Mi esposa es venezolana, and she thinks that her tamales are uh, hayacas, que se llaman, y yo le digo que son hayacas. Le digo yo. <laughs> Porque los tamales, los nacatamales, para mí son los más ricos, underrated as fuck. El yep. otro, el otro que le digo yo, que if you know about this, o sos nicaragüense, o te casaste con un nicaragüense. Pero es el indio viejo. Okay. A mí, a mí el indio viejo, first of all, no, if you don't know about it, it's because you're not nigga. And if you know about it, you know about it. But that shit is delicious. It looks like a fucking old man threw up. It looks like, yeah. I told my wife, I told you, I was like, look, don't look at it. It looks like 14, it looks like 14th and Ocean on a Sunday morning after a Saturday <laughs> party. Right? <laughs> entonces, mira horrible. Entonces, I was like, I was like, don't look at it, just eat it. I promise you, it's fucking good. But I need your viejo. And then, you know what I like a lot, man? Eh, para el postre, es el coso de horno. Pero no, I don't like the crumbly one. I like the one that's like the, the slick one. El coso de horno. That's why I would say the three uh, underrated, underrated dishes. I love it, bro. I love it. I think my three underrated would be number one, el bajo. Ah, uh, okay. okay. You know, porque la hoja de plátano, el, hoja, el bajo no. number one. Number two, la moronga, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> because you know the French make it about blood sauces. They start thirty bucks a plate. You go to you go to Jambo, you get moronga right there for three bucks oh, a plate. <laughs> and the, and the last one is probably huevo tortuga. You know nothing better than la boquita huevo tortuga, chile, tostón, ensalada. Ahí nomás con la mosca. Le I I tell that story to my my wife. I go, yeah, when I was a kid, we used to have turtle eggs, and she does not approve. She yeah, is a, she is a, she is a millennial. She is a millennial and she does not approve. And I was like, no, it was a different time. It was a different Understand time. it. And then, yeah. And I think those three are banging, you know, ahora, talk about this. Give me your one pet peeve in society. I think, uh, I, bro, we don't listen to each other, bro. I, I, I it bothers me. You know, when you're watching TV and you're seeing, uh, and you're seeing two people who are having an argument, but you're like, no, they're not just, you're just not talking through it. You know, like 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 the guy, like the girl walks in on the guy, and the guy looks like he was kissing another girl, but he wasn't. 
and like and then she leaves and the guy goes oh and you in your life in your mind you go well fucking go after her and tell her what happened explain yourself that it's not a big deal I, I see that a lot in our society. Todo el mundo se pone a gritar, todo el mundo se pone, they're, they're real quick to be like, you're fucking stupid. And be like, well, let's hold on, man. Let's, let's take, yo también, no, no soy, no soy. Let, let's have a conversation. Let's have a conversation. I think the conversation. Yeah, yes, todo el mundo, todo el mundo se pone a gritar and who could, who, who could yell loudest or who could uh, have the funnier insult. Oh, because yeah. if you insult somebody, you immediately discount them. And, yeah. and that, that to me is a pet peeve is we don't we don't have a communicate we don't have real talk real communication especially oh. now in the last in this country in the last four or five years with with this political climate everything's been very separated i'm with you on that i'm with you on that last question uh stone cold bro you having fun on this interview <laughs> not typical, not typical, not typical right you haven't no 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 not typical not typical all right uh three people dead or alive that you would have to have that you would love to have dinner with who would it be you know, when I was a kid, I would have said Alexis Arguello, but then I met him. So I'm all right. <laughs> so I'm all right. Uh, el sí, sí, el búfalo. Uh, and don't say, uh, dead or alive, three people that I would like to have uh, dinner with. Bro, I, I'm a huge fan. There's, there, I'm going to name you some people. I'm a huge fan of Sylvester Stallone. El historia de Sylvester Stallone, how he was broke and how he wrote Rocky. That's somebody who I look up to as a performer and as somebody who didn't stop. Because he was broke and they wanted to buy Rocky the script, but they didn't want him to act in it. That whole story is, is what dreams are made of. Like, oh, he's like, no, I'm I'm gonna do this myself. And he was flabby, he didn't even have muscles and none of that shit. But he said, I'm gonna do it myself, and he built an empire. Yep. Um, I kind of feel the same way about The Rock, but The Rock is one of those people where you like I, I'm in awe of him. Like I like you watch him, you go, Oh my god. Um and uh I'm trying to think of somebody who's passed away. You know, I I would say um I would say Cela Cruz. Cela, I would like to have that conversation with Cela Cruz. Uh, you know what I mean? Have a dinner, have a conversation with her because she in toda la entrevista que la veo, she's always super fun, pero when they talk to her about serious stuff, she wasn't a dummy. She knew what the fuck was going on. So Yeah, she and, left she left dictatorship. She spoke against the government. She right. had matrimonio casada hasta el final. Uh -huh. You know, wasn't allowed to go back to her country. Ella era una cantante en una industria que dominada por los machos. You mm -hmm. know, and so she's a superhero for real, man. Super, super and, real. I, and I like her, her and Lucy Arnaz. Ah, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Lucy well, Arnaz. I that? named my daughter after her. But did you? That's I'm, a, cool. I'm, I'm that big of a fan. What well, Lucy did, hablando la misma cosa de Cela Cruz, male-dominated industry, rise to the ranks. She had her own studio. She she was the first one to own her own her own uh originals. Yeah. Because in ese día there were no reruns. She well, owned her own original. That that's so. how you, you could tell your Latino is fucked because I asked for three, you gave me four. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Listen, Sylvester, uh, Rock, their brands. You you are a brand who happens to do comedy. I'm a right. brand who happens to focus on telling Latino stories and through food, right? Our viewers are brands through different avenues, winemakers, comedians, look at Sam. So it's been an honor. Have you ever met un chino nicaragüense like this? No. But, <laughs> uh, you uh, but honestly, no, like, I was just going to give you your roses, bro. Thank you for what you're doing. I appreciate what you're doing. When you reached out to me, I was like, I would be honored. Like you asked me, would you do, uh, uh, would you be willing to do it? Willing? I, was like, I would be fucking honored. I am like, anybody who wants to talk about our people, anybody who wants to give, give, anybody kind of credit and respect i i love what you're doing i appreciate yeah. what you're doing thank you so much for that things happen for a reason and when i saw you man i was cracking up i put my all my tag all my family members on there um so one it's good for the culture what you're doing thank two you. is good for nicaragüenses keep it up siempre positivo siempre sin come mierda bro and, and keep up the shit i look forward to meeting you in person all right my brother i appreciate you thank you very much brother love you man thank Hasta you la próxima. Hello. Let me see you some.